I'm Neil Skelton and I'm Head of Professional Services for ITS United Kingdom, which is the Intelligent Transport Society for the United Kingdom industries, academia, consultants and others who have a registered interest in looking at what these technologies can do for them and also for the UK, uh, as I say, it's national and it's also international. We're looking at the whole issue of improving the network, regardless of the mode of transport, by using technologies to make people's trans travel and transport that much better, simpler and more effective. And in this context, for TISPOL, it's very much on the issue of uh, road safety and is improving the driver experience, because ITS is all about the cross-the-range experience of dealing with people driving in a safe, appropriate manner at the same time as benefiting from the journey. As a former career police officer, um, I obviously have a vested interest in connecting the police service roles and responsibilities with my current roles and responsibilities in an in industrial setting and hopefully putting the two together. So let's look at what ITS has done in the past decades. So how are things different now from what they were 10 years ago? And looking ahead, how different again will they be 10 years from now? Over the years, as I've been about 10 years since I've been involved in ITS, and you've seen this remarkable change in computing power. Uh, and that really has changed the dynamics totally. What was seen as a geeky, scientific, um, experimental area of work is now very much embedded into day-to-day -day use on the roads. Most of it is hidden, um, and I've referred to it for many years as the Cinderella. Eventually she will go to the ball, and I think that time is approaching. The technologies which are firmly embedded in vehicles, roadside infrastructures, actually make the, the journey that much more simpler. Fortunately, the, the average motorist and driver has no awareness of these technologies whatsoever. And the only time that they come into play is when something untoward happens. And that's really where the benefit of the technologies come to play from a road safety perspective. But from a day-to-day -day driving around, the information that these technologies provide are virtually anonymous to the, the, the average user. Should a motorist feel in any way threatened by ITS? Uh, no, I mean, I mean, the philosophy always has been is that the driver has control and retains control. And th th there's, a, there's a debate on that because a number of the ITS technologies can anticipate and start to prepare. But I use that word advisedly, it's preparation for the driver's reaction and response because the forward-looking radar, the, the detection sensors can identify an imminent collision the lateral sensors can identify lane deviation, but it doesn't detract from the fact that these merely advise the driver and the driver then takes response. Where you start to get into more difficult issues is when you get into forward-looking technologies such as platooning, where a series of vehicles, and it's been trialled, it's been trialled on private roads, is where vehicles are closely hitched, i.e. a few yards apart, uh, and they're driving along the motorway, um, and, and invariably motorways and autobahns and roads of that nature, in close proximity to each other, far closer than the recommended braking distances. And this is all reliant upon technological uh, capabilities. The capabilities work, it's the policies and the related uh, standards and procedures that go with it that are under debate. But it still doesn't get away from the fact that it's the driver has that responsibility. And this is still the defining aspect of all these technologies. Mm -hmm.